After my mother died, dad was left with a big job. He had to raise us on his own. He worked long hours fixing cars, trying to make enough money to make ends meet. Kamal came all the way from Turkey to visit friends and family. During his stay, he'd always make a quick stop to see my dad. When my father was a teenager, he came across a gang in his neighborhood that had jumped Kamal. There were more than a dozen guys surrounding him. One of the bigger thugs pulled out a knife to cut Kamal's tongue out. The rest of the gang jumped in and pinned Kamal down to the ground. Kamal screamed for help. My dad couldn't bear to watch. He knew he had no chance of beating these guys, but he still decided to jump in and stop them. When they asked him, what do you care, he's only a Turk, my father told them, he's a human being, and if you cut him, you might as well cut me first. I guess that hit a nerve with these guys and they let Kamal go. So Kamal never forgot that night and figured my dad saved his life. My father saw it as the only thing he saved was his dignity. Hi, Tina. Yeah? Did you get Dino to bring the money to Tommy? Yeah, of course. Did you tell Dino to go with him? Yeah, I told Dino to go with him. Good. Do you know how my dad is doing? No, honey, I don't. I haven't heard no? anything. No? Did you ask Dino to tell Tommy to call me? Yeah, I told him to call you. Hasn't well, he hasn't called me yet. Okay, well, I'm sure he will. Okay, how, how did the fight go? Tina, we got a big problem. Oh, oh, get oh, I took it easy in the fourth round. I just moved around waiting to go down in the fifth, just like I was told. I throw a punch that barely touches this guy, he goes down, and he doesn't get back up. I swear to God I didn't touch him. Oh my God, oh my God, you're telling me you won the fight? Yeah, I won the fight. Sean, we've got a problem. I know we got a fucking problem. What am I gonna do? When I found out I owed Coconut a million dollars, my jaw almost hit the floor. He's never gonna let this go, John. I know Coconut's not gonna let this go. I can't skip town. What about my dad? Where the fuck am I gonna find a million dollars? John, what are we gonna do? What am I gonna do? Oh God, John, there's somebody here, John. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Να σε πάρουνε. Ναι. Τι λες τώρα, Τι παπά, λες, παπά. Είσαι εντάξει. Ναι. Είσαι εντάξει. Είμαι εντάξει, Γιάννη. Έχω μια ώρα που περιμένω τώρα. Στο αεροδρόμι. Στο αεροδρόμι. Είσαι στο νοσοκομείο. Δεν καταλαβαίνω. Ο Τάμις μου είπε ότι ήσουν στο νοσοκομείο. Ήσουν άρρωστες. Είμαι στο αεροδρόμιο. Εσύ που είσαι, Γιάννη. Δεν καταλαβαίνω. Ο Τάμις μου είπε ότι ήσουν άρρωστος και ήσουν στο νοσοκομείο. Ο Τάμις μας δουλεύει. Αστιεύεται, Γιάννη. Δεν το καταλαβαίνεις. Είμαι στο αεροδρόμιο. Εσύ που είσαι. Oh. Γιάννη. Γιάννη. Παπά, εντάξει, τώρα που είσαι. Ε, 
έρθει κάποιο να με πάρει. Εντάξει, κάτσε εκεί πέρα και θα στείλω κάποιον να έρθει να σε πάρει. Στο information booth. Ο Τάμι θα έρθει να με πάρει. Όχι, θα του πω ότι φίλε μου του Ντίνο να έρθει να σε πάρει. Θα σου πω μετά τι έχει γίνει. Οκ. Okay. Παπά, είσαι εντάξει. Είμαι εντάξει, είμαι εντάξει. Δόξα το Θεό. Δόξα το Θεό. Εντάξει, παπά μου, θα, θα σε δώσω σε λίγο, εντάξει. Σ' αγαπάω. Ναι, είμαι εντάξει, Γιάννη. Άτε, γεια. Dino. Hey, Johnny, how'd you do? Did you win? I don't have time to explain things to you right now. Did you give the money to Tommy? Yeah. Did you go with him? No, I didn't go with him. You didn't go with him? I told Tina to tell you to go with him. Well, Tina did tell me to go with him, but I couldn't, so I asked him to go. Hey, did I do something wrong? Oh, that fucking bastard. Listen, I need your help. I need you to go to the airport and pick up my dad. He's at the information booth at Terminal 2. I want you to keep him at your place for a couple of days. Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. Uh, I thought your pops was in the hospital. Hey, Johnny, is everything okay? No, not everything is okay, buddy. I'll explain everything to you later, man. I need you to do one more thing for me. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Sign me up for that pool tournament. Well, what about the 50 grand to get in? Buddy, I got the fucking money from the fight. I'll bring it with me. All man. right, take it easy. Jeez, whoa. Hey, all right. I didn't know you were going to do that. Take it Dino, easy. Dino, hang on. Yeah, sure. Hello? Mo, it's a really bad time right now. Can I call you back later? Mo, uh, I won, but I can't use the money for the infomercial. I, I really gotta go right now. Oh, fuck, Mo, go ahead. Put your own money in, man, but you're taking a risk. I, I, I really gotta go right now, man. You're taking your own risk. I gotta go right now. Okay, bye. Dino. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, you will get my dad at the airport. I'm taking the next flight out. I'll see you in a few hours, okay? All right, okay, all right. Bye. Okay, see you, bye. I wish I could see my dad before the game. But what am I gonna tell him? That my drug addict brother scammed me for a hundred grand? And now I'm fucked? If I don't get this money by four o'clock today, coconut will kill Tina. Fucking cool, cute. This once a year underground event attracts pool sharks, dirt bags, and gamblers from all over the country. Some of these characters I know from other tournaments I've played in. You never know what you're up against until you start playing. A lot of these guys spent their whole lives hustling vulnerable suckers in pool halls. Others just play all year preparing for this one game. Take Tony the Mooch. They call him the Mooch because he has short arms and deep pockets. Then there's Freddy the Finger. They call him the Finger because every time he makes a shot, he'd give you the finger. Then there's Johnny Cool. No matter how much money or pressure was on the game, Johnny wouldn't blink an eye. How about Fat Frank? We dreaded playing him because he smelled so bad that he distracted your game. Now Stool, he had short arms and short legs, so he used the stool. The rumor is, not everything was short on Stooly. Elvis was an Elvis wannabe. After being thrown out of every club, dive, and drunk tank from New York to LA, he took on pool as his new career. Nobody was slicker than Fast Eddie. Not only did he shoot fast, but he was known for how fast he moved in on other people's wives. One of the most interesting guys was Big Bad Boomer. He had a head on him like a watermelon. He would growl while he played. He won most games just by scaring the shit out of his opponents. I gotta tell you about Sebastian. This guy was more queer than a $3 bill. Every time he'd bend over to take a shot, he'd be staring at your ass. Every one of these guys had a story, one more interesting than the other. It was almost worth losing 50 grand just to have the opportunity to meet these degenerate half-wits, eccentrics, and psychotics.